30 years ago, the youth radio station Hits FM exploded onto Melbourne's airwaves. In fact, those pesky hits stole so many young listeners, the number one station Fox FM dropped to number four. But what was it like for the people at Fox? Well, today, you're going to find out from the king and queen of Melbourne radio, two people who were hosting Fox Breakfast back then in March 1994. You'll hear about the Fox FM Sky Show, which was infiltrated by Hits FM, and hear what it's like when you host the number one show on the number one station, but your daughter and her friends are listening to the kids down the other end of the dial. You'll see which of Melbourne's current radio stars got their start at this little station that could, and see a whole bunch of photos and videos to bring up some amazing 90s memories. But now let's welcome two people that so many Melbournians have listened to at multiple radio stations. And boy, have they got some stories. Thank you so much for joining me, Grubby and Dee Dee. Hi, guys. Oh, How are you going? <laughs> guys, I'm keen to jump straight in and rewind that clock back to the early 90s, a time when Fox FM was even more dominant than it is today. The station had the biggest competitions, the biggest ratings. At one point, there was a Fox FM shop at Myers. And I've never heard of a radio station, station having <laughs> their own shop where you could buy all the Fox gear. It, it really, yeah, it, it sort of owned Melbourne. And there was an, an, uh, this huge event that we did um, across the summer period called Sky Show, where everyone would come to Albert Park Lake. And I think they would get between sort of 200,000 and, and 300,000 people all around Albert Park Lake. And there would be this massive fireworks show with the pontoons in the middle of the lake. And the music, the soundtrack would be on Fox in the days where everyone carried a radio with them. Like it wouldn't work now because everyone's got their earbuds in. Um, and the, the fireworks were set to the music. And, and the thinking was that if they tuned their radios to Fox then, then it would stay there somehow and it would um, reflect in the ratings. But, um, Grub, you probably remember, I mean, it was it was massive. It was Huge. just one of the big Melbourne events. Mm. And I remember, again, with high school days, every second kid had a Fox sticker on their school bag. Mm. Yeah. And it, it was, was a big sticker. thing. Absolutely. It was very dynamic and it really stood yeah. out. Anything else from that period that you think, wow, you know, what was a pinch me moment? I don't know about you, Grub, but I don't feel like I absorbed it properly at the time. And and there was one day when, and I'm Gillian uh, Anderson, the X Files was huge, the biggest show yeah. on TV. And Gillian Anderson came out to Australia to do a tour. And um, Grub and I were sent to, I think it was Southland Shopping Centre. She was doing an appearance. Southland, yeah. Yeah, and they had us set up on the stage in the centre of the shopping centre. I know it's only a shopping centre, but just before she came out on the stage, we sort of looked at each other and looked around and it was literally packed to the rafters. Yeah. And I can remember yeah. then just thinking, I know they were there, they were there for her, they weren't there for us, but to be part to be involved in that and to be part of something so big, I thought this is a major Hollywood star and we're in the thick of it. Yeah. But yeah, Grub, you just sort of triggered something in me then. I've forgotten. I mean, we were having great fun, but for some reason we always lived in fear that we were about to lose our jobs, you know, that someone else would come along and we'd be kicked out. Yeah, look, there was, there was, there was always that. There was a degree of that always, you know, you, in radio, there's always kind of that. I mean, we're having so much fun. We thought, oh, my God, it's going to end one day. And we were always in trouble or we weren't funny enough or we weren't this or we weren't that or something or other. And look, at Diddy and I evolved over the years as just two friends who got on very well off air and on air and we had a very natural relationship on air. And I don't think a lot of people always quite understood that, you know, I, I wasn't a comedian like my brother. and uh, But occasionally I might say things by chance that were amusing to some. Now, Grubby, you said before uh, you were talking about this kind of fear in commercial radio and the big stations, you know, am I going to lose my job so soon? And I suppose that leads me to the conversation about ratings day. Now, ratings are something that the average person watching now who isn't perhaps a uh, person who works in radio, I suppose their experience of ratings is maybe once a year they might see a news story on the TV with some famous radio person popping champagne because they've got to number one. And that's probably all they know about it. 
Um, I'm just wondering if you, well, either of you wish to quickly explain ratings day for the, uh, the average person who hasn't sat in a room waiting for some boss to read out some numbers that could be very good or very bad or somewhere in between. It, it was a bit tense, but you know, I think I think we just we just breezed over it as best we could. We we were trying to be entertaining on a light entertainment format. I mean, you you, you can't get bogged down too much with that. It's like people who read too much social media about themselves and they believe that people who blow smoke up their ass and they believe the people who hate them. And they'll always be that. So you, you you do your best to keep away from it. But it was a, it could it could be a bit tense for some people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I remember it differently. I remember it as being a really big deal. We'd all be called into the boardroom, you know, and, and you know, if it was a good result, which yeah. we were lucky it was a lot of times, um, big cheers and, yes, there would be champagne or there would be celebration. And there was even a, a time where our um, what we were paid was linked to the ratings. Yeah. So if the ratings, so there were incentives, if you if your shift went up, a certain amount you would receive bonus money there was one particular executive i believe grub drove a porsche into the car park a morning or two after the, the ratings had gone up now at this point uh, 30 years ago so we're talking summer 93 94 uh, the youth radio station which you two probably weren't aware of most of the time had popped up in rabin on 89.9 on the far left of the dial so most people wouldn't bump into it unless they'd been told by a fellow teenager in the schoolyard. Um, so the first survey of 1994, um, all the all the stations that aren't the big ones, like the, the community ones, are all put into a thing called Other FM at the bottom of the thing. And it usually wasn't discussed because it usually was about 1.5 or 1.8%. And uh, on the 22nd of February 1994, the first ratings came out for that um, year of 1994. And the other FM rating uh, for 10 to 17s, because it's put into age demographics, the 10 to 17s, normally 1.8, had gone to 15.1. Uh, at the same time, the 18 to 24 slice had gone from 3.3 to 12.8. And uh, they largely attributed to this bunch of pesky kids called Hits FM and Moorabbin, who just popped up. Now, um, I need to ask you, Grubby, you had mentioned to me the other day that you had a, a family member listening to Hits FM who was telling you about it. Let's let's hear about this. Yeah, my daughter, uh, 94, she would have been 12, 13, around there. So she was right in the slot and she started talking about it. And she said, oh, I've got this, you know, I'm listening to this. All the kids are listening to Hits FM. Is Hits FM. I thought, damn, for goodness sake, community radio station, please don't bother your father with that. Um, when I was smoking my pipe in my study. Uh, and I, but, but she kept saying about it. And she said, oh, they're playing all this dance music and all the stuff that we like listening to. Um, and we being teenage kids. And then I remember being a Sky show that year and we had all our promotions people, our young promotions people. And one of them came back to me nearly in tears. He was, he was a bit of a drama queen. Um, he said, oh, grubby. They're all, all the kids are out there listening to hits. They're listening to nothing but hits. And I thought, geez, it's this hits again I've been keep, keeping on hearing about. That was how I knew about it. And look, the first survey, yeah, was a was an impact. I mean, we knew they'd go away one day and, and we could all get back to normal. But they were a thorn in the side. And I think a little bit like when punk rock arrived in England in the mid-70s and shook up all the, the old prog rockers. It was kind of like that. Didn't mm. kind of last forever, but it was a bloody jab. And mm. I'm not sure whether our executives were freaked out about it. We probably got the blame. Um, but it, look, it was it was really interesting, and it actually made sense because these days, 2024, I don't believe there's a radio station for really young people. No young people in my life, grandchildren, have a radio station like they did then like kids had fox or they had triple m or they had hits or whatever but it but it blew the mouth cut open it was an interesting time i think it is so cool it is it is so good mm. i love what those kids did even though they're grown yep. ups now um and probably the people of melbourne should thank all everyone who worked at hits because 
it would have been a massive wake up call for the established yeah. radio stations. But you've got to remember, like there was probably never any chance. I think there was some thought, you know, would the license be extended? Was it, I think, was it a three month period? It maybe was extended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was talk of it maybe being given another go later in the year. There was zero chance of that happening because the commercial stations would have lobbied hard with anyone with any power in the government to make sure that that never happened because oh, there was yeah. so much money at stake through advertisers yes. to the commercial stations like Fox. Um, but how cool. Like, honestly, oh, oh. I think and I, I wish that I had paid more attention um, and looking back now, it's I have vague recollections when when Grub describes it, but it would have been for us working at Fox at the time, and I don't mean to sound rude because it's not what I actually think. Clearly, I think it was a great idea. It was a great thing, but it would have been just a mosquito bite to, to anyone yeah. at Fox because we knew that it was going to go away. It was an occasional irritant or a, a short-time irritant, and it was gone. But I think it probably provided a very handy bit of market research for Fox and maybe Triple M to a certain extent to look and go, hang on, there's a massive market here. It's interesting you mentioned about the market research because around January, February, March of 1994, suddenly uh, Triple M was playing E17's It's All Right. Now, <laughs> that was a yeah. Hits FM staple. Now, I'm not yeah. sure how how they got inspired to suddenly change their music and start playing It's All Right by E17, but they did so. And the mm. same with Double T FM, who up to that point were very much known as the slow Mariah Carey songs, the uh, Celine Dion, um, that sort of thing. And suddenly they were playing M People moving on up, which is a much more boppy kind of track. Gabe, can I ask you a question? Um, what I wonder is, because um, I've watched some of the archival footage of the, the re reports and stuff, and Molly talked about it on Hey Hey, which was fantastic. You know, whatever Molly said in those days was mm. was was a hit. Everyone followed what Molly said. Um, yeah. How many of, you know, you see all these kids in their school uniforms working there. How many of the people who are involved in hits stayed in the radio industry or in media? Yeah. In media, absolutely. So you'd both know Paul Dowsley, Channel 7? Yep. yep. Well, he was with hits from 92. He was uh, one of our announcers. I started with him at a station called ECB FM in Croydon, now Eastern FM. Julie Doyle was our news director. She's now ABC Canberra. Um, yep. You've got uh, Troy Ellis, who was with us. Yes. He's working on Triple M. Yep. Uh, Smooth FM in Melbourne. You've got Ty Frost and Simon Diaz, both Hits yep. FM alumni. Yeah. Uh, doing great stuff there. Another person is uh, Corey Layton, who you might yeah, have bumped yeah. into over the years. He, mm -hmm. I believe, launched Nova in Melbourne. Captain the, Turntable. Captain Turntable. And Nova, um, I believe, took some uh, the spirit of hits to some extent, some yeah, people have said, um, in that it had rock and dance and it was reverent and the yeah. the lineup were youngish um, and they were doing kind of out there stuff. But look, I, I have no doubt Hitch, Hitch was an influence. It was, it was a jab in the ribs for the big guys and it was an influence, definitely. Good thing, good thing. But the and other thing that's extraordinary to me is how the word spread to have such an impact on the ratings when there was no social media, I don't imagine there was anything of a, an advertising budget, no. to just spread the word by word of mouth to create this movement amongst young people to support the radio station and to fit and remember the ratings in those days, it was an actual physical book. Someone had to sit there and tick all the little things to, to then someone's Tick hits on all of those books. For that to happen without social media is incredible. And without yeah. mobile phones where people can text each other and go, oh, switch that on. You should have a listen to this. It's going viral to... before going viral was a thing, isn't it? Yeah. And as mm -hmm. you absolutely said, you know, there's, there was no internet. Mm. Uh, the advertising was little stickers that we you know someone's dad was in the sticker company so we got some stickers printed free and like you know the, the cd players were often borrowed from parents or whatever so yeah it was sticky tape operation it's a great story it's it, it's it reminds me always very much of the successful pirate radio stations that were off england in the 60s 
when the, England was run by the BBC and the pirate radio stations like Radio Caroline and, and everyone were the only ones playing The Who and The Kinks and all of these people and they're offshore and they've been back into England and off old ships. Great story. It's a great story. I've got a mate that I used to do radio with. He was my on-air co-host and we just magically ended up together and hit it off wonderfully. And I texted him and said, look, I'm talking to these guys. What would you ask him? And he said, ask them about chemistry. Somehow mm -hmm. after, what is it, 30 years, there's been no murders committed that I'm aware of. You both appear to be alive and well. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Well, I... You know, I'll get emotional, but no, I'll try not to. Grub is, he he's my brother. We're not related. We are yin and yang. There's a weird little quirk we have where our birthdays are exactly six months apart. He's September 17th and I'm March 17th. We are, there's, so there's, I think there's something in that. We're yin and yang. We are best mates. He has supported me at times when I'm falling down and I hope that I've been in the ear for him when he's needed it. I don't know what it is. I don't know how to sum it up. It's, I don't know. We just, we just click, don't we, Grub? Yeah, it's just the thing. Um, it's just the thing where there's implicit trust. Uh, there's, a, there's an awful lot of respect and uh, there's an underlying affection. And I think one of the best things we ever did is present ourselves to management as a double act, as opposed to I'm I'm the one with male genitals there, therefore I probably should get paid a little bit more. Yeah. I know she's going to be there. I know she's going to hit it back across the net to me. And um, that's been that's been the secret. I think, look, other good duos get on well. There's been a lot of duos who loathe each other. And I won't mm. name names. I'm not like that. But, I mean, you look at Hamish and Andy, um, and they've been terrific, but they're great mates. They're all they're buddies. They're mates. Um, yeah, that's that's okay. I, I ran into Andy Lee a few weeks ago. Yeah, you know, my old mates. Like who isn't? It's like yeah. of course they are. It's like that, which is great. Now, Grubby, I just want to wrap up with one final question for you. What are you going to say to your daughter after all this time, who just? ran off with a bunch of kids 30 years ago and stopped listening to Dad's show. It's like, geez, what's a, what's well, a bloke got to do? Uh, disgraceful. But, yeah, very funny. Uh, we, um, we we still have talks about it, and it's funny because she was very much a member of that whole dance rave scene later. I'm sure she ingested some of Carl Williams' finest products at some of those parties, and um, uh, she, uh, but she remembers that period very well. And she loved being at the forefront of it. And oh, look, uh, look, look, look what I've discovered. And my friends, Dad, what are you doing? You know, you're playing uh, more Pink Floyd. No, Dad, but they're good. Yeah, I know they're good. But yeah, it, it was it was an, an interesting time. It really was, and I could see it. I was on the coal face of it. I can tell you, <laughs> Grubby Dee Dee. Thank you so much. I'm sure everyone watching has loved your stories, and I'm so thrilled you could spare the time. Thank you. <laughs> and congratulations to you, 30-year anniversary, and, and what an extraordinary thing Hits was. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Great part of Melbourne yeah. music history. Thank well, you um, very much. All I've got to do now is finish, finish the book. Good. Good do it. <laughs> if this has brought back wonderful memories of Hits FM and the 90s, well, fear not, there's more. Let's click on the description below, and there you'll see links to my blog and Facebook page where you will find a ton of Hits FM recordings to listen to, videos, stories, photos, and information on the forthcoming Hits FM book. Hope to hear from you soon. Have you ever listened to a radio station that lost the fight? It may have been Hits FM a youth radio station in Melbourne that spawned a few copies. Hits FM was recognisable by dance tracks, pop music and hip-hop. A lack of Barnsey, Pink Floyd and other classic rock. And the absence of blokey voices, such as mine, during their many broadcasts. Losing old recordings of hits is a major problem in Australia. Please help us stop it. Hits FM gave artists and labels a chance to launch their careers, but sadly was unable to get a full-time licence 
in 2001. If you'd like to stream old school recordings of Hits FM Melbourne, visit this website. And if you know anyone who loved hits back in the 90s, please share this video. This message brought to you by Gabe McGrath and his forthcoming Hits FM book.